Hey guys, this is Mr. O'Brien again, and this is your last video for Topic 1 Themes of Life. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the unique properties of water and how these properties actually are very important in supporting life on Earth. So the first thing we have to talk about is water in general. Now water is one of the most important molecules of life. Without specific features of water, uh, life as we know it would not exist. And the feature that we're mostly going to be talking about is something called hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonds are these uh, weak attractions between water molecules. And what happens is, you notice how there is this positive end and this negative here. Well, if you look... The negative end is attracted to the positive end, and what this does is it creates a weak attraction. And remember, water is composed of two hydrogens and one oxygen, so these hydrogen bonds are the reason that life pretty much exists on Earth. It gives water all of its properties. Now, water is what's known as a polar molecule, or it has polarity. And what this means is that there is an uneven, distribu uh, un uneven distribution of charge on a molecule. So one side will have a positive charge, which would be our oxygen side right here. And the other side will have a negative charge on the oxygen. I said that wrong, excuse me. So the oxygen will have a negative charge, while as the hydrogens will have positive. So this positive negative creates an attraction between the water molecules, as you can see down here, because of that unequal distribution of the electrons in that covalent bond. So each one of these that I'm circling right now is a covalent bond where electrons are shared. Well, the electrons are not completely shared, which is why we get this slight positive and slight negative charge. So again, like I said, hydrogen bonds are the reason for all of these characteristics of life. Polar molecules such as water molecules have a weak partially negative charge at one region of the molecule and a partially positive. And if you look here, it creates this subtle attraction between the water molecules. This is why there's all these rivers and streams and why when you dip a paper towel in water, it'll climb up because of these hydrogen bonds. So when water molecules are close, they're going to attract just like in a water droplet. And again, this is due to a very important um, property or a very important thing called hydrogen bonds, this weak attraction. Now, hydrogen bonds actually do a pretty remarkable thing. And this is the reason that if you're a fisherman, you get to fish in the same pond year in and year out. Now, if you want to think about it, it, it turns out that unlike most um, elements, water, when frozen into a solid, actually becomes less dense. Now think about it like this, a lot of solids are much more dense than the liquid version. So because water is less dense, ice actually floats. And the reason that this happens, if you look, you notice how cold water actually, it does condense those water molecules a little bit. Warm water, they expand. But what happens is when it freezes, it creates this big lattice structure. And that lattice structure makes it less dense, and floating on top, this is why um, um, glaciers, or not glaciers, uh, this is why these, uh, this is why ice can float in water, just like when you put ice cubes in a glass of water, they float on the top. So ice floats and is very important, because if you think about it, uh, down here we got Mr. Fishy down here, he's swimming along, no big deal, and he lives at the bottom of this lake. Now what happens when winter comes, if if uh, ice was actually more dense than water, the ice would actually crash down on it and kill all the living things that occur in it. So since ice floats, it actually uh, helps insulate the water and keep these um, animals alive on the inside. Now, another property of water that we have is that water molecules naturally want to stick to each other because of these hydrogen bonds. So when water sticks to other water, we call this cohesion. So this is caused by those hydrogen bonds that form between slightly positive and slightly negative ends of neighboring molecules. So cohesion is when water sticks to water, which is why you find these water droplets that attach to um, 
the spider web as you can see over there. Now adhesion is when water molecules stick to other surfaces. Now adhesion is very important because this causes water to move upward against gravity in plant stems and to be in a, uh, absorbed by a paper towel. So without this adhesion properly, water wouldn't be able to get up to the leaves to perform photosynthesis. So when water comes through the leaves, it's able to bind to these, uh, these xylem that allow it to climb up the plant and get to the leaves so that it can be used. So adhesion and cohesion is when water has this um, adhesive property, they can stick to one another. Another uh, property of water we have is surface tension. So the same type of thing, water is wants to stick to one another. So we, what happens is it almost acts like a film. And if you look really close right here to this water strider, you can actually see how the water is being indented. So the hydrogen bonds between neighboring molecules cause a film to develop and some animals can actually walk on it. Now this swimmer here, she has not, or he has not yet breached the um, surface tension of the water, which is why you see this really cool film occurring over her as she's coming up to breathe. So again, surface tension is water has the ability to support small objects because they stick together. Now, like we talked about um, adhesion and cohesion, sometimes it's referred to as capillary action. Now, capillary action is when that water does climb up through those structures. So again, water absorbed through the roots and is able to climb up the plant, which is allows it to survive over time. Now, another way to think of it is down here, if you notice, these are celery stalks. So when we put, color, put them in colored water, it actually can pull up the coloring and you can see it um, changing color. So think about what happens when you dip a paper towel in a puddle as well. Because water molecules stick together, cohesion, and to other substances, adhesion, they're able to travel up and against the pull of gravity, which is a very important characteristic that keeps plants alive. Another one we have is high specific heat. Now water has a high boiling point and is one of the few substances that can remain a, a liquid at such a large range of temperatures from zero degrees to 100 degrees. So what specific heat is pretty much means that it's very difficult to change the temperature of water. Uh, large amounts of energy must be invested to overcome the hydrogen bonds in liquid water to change its phase. So if you wanna look at it in terms of the ocean, right? In California, it can get up to 100 degrees, but the water temperatures remain roughly the same. So here is uh, San Bernardino, Palm Springs, 100 degrees, 106 degrees. But as we get closer to the water, notice how the temperatures become stabilized from water not being able to change forms. Uh, same thing like, uh, for example, this is also why when you sweat, um, when you are working very hard and you begin to sweat, it takes a large amount of energy to evaporate water. So when the water evaporates off your skin, it causes your body to cool naturally. Now, water is also considered the universal solvent, which means uh, water is able to be dissolved, uh, is able to dissolve a wide variety of substances, such as sugar, salt, things along those lines. Now, more substances will actually dissolve in water than any other liquid. This includes polar substances and even ionic substances, um, so like sugar as well as salt. So when sugar crystals are actually placed in the water, the slightly positive and negative ends of the water molecules attract the sugar molecule in the crystal and pull them into the solution. So for example, if you look here, this sodium ion has a positive charge. So what happens is all the negative charges of those oxygens surround the positive one. Same thing happens with the chlorine, which is negative. All the positive hydrogens are surrounding it to dissolve it completely into the water. So again, here's just another picture. You can see how the positive and negative ends surround and are able to um, mix them in. So again, like I said, water is a very important molecule in life. You know, adhesion, cohesion, water's ability to stick to itself as well as other things are very important. High specific heat keeps uh, animals cool. Um, it keeps the temperature of water pretty stable. 
universal solvent can dissolve a lot of things, which is why we can bring things into our cells very easily. So these are the um, properties of water. Hopefully this helps you out. And again, this is the last section of our notes of topic one. This is Mr. O'Brien and good luck.